Hello YouTubers, this is a new session where I get to walk you through uh, some of the modern architecture components for uh, developing and architecting AI systems, production ready AI systems. But we got to start from scratch, we got to start from the bottom. Today I want to talk to you about MCP servers, MCP, which stands for Model context protocol which is the latest and greatest you're literally right now if you're watching this video you're at the bleeding edge of that technology because you know right now this is a raw kind of concept that's just kind of being circulated around people are not sure about it some people are still starting to use it putting it in production learning from their experience and then blogging about how it works uh, MCP as a concept was introduced by Anthropic which is an AI company with AI solutions that put a lot of good stuff out there and you know it the purpose of it is to kind of offer standardized way, remote or local, standardized way for your large language models to be able to use some external resources or external functions. So think about it this way. You have an LLM, you have this large language model running, and you want this LLM to know about, let's say, the weather. You want it to go and talk to a weather API and get the details from that weather API and send it right back to the LLM so it can tell you, you know, what the weather is. So that makes your LLM even more interesting, more agentic, more RAG style because it's kind of retrieval augmented, trying to kind of figure out how the data works and the latest and greatest of that data. That's what MCP is. And think about it as a marketplace. Everyone wants to roll an MCP server that serves one purpose or another. You get to subscribe to it or attach your LLM model to it and get data from it. You know, it's super, super exciting. But before we do that, I want to explain it to you a little bit, right? Explain it to you further, right? A, an MCP as a concept, as a concept, bear with me on this piece, it relies on a model, a model that works with resources or context through a protocol, okay? A protocol, right? So that describes the whole client-server relationship here. This is the entire deal here, right? Because the model could be anything, it could be tiny llama, Great context is your data. It could be, you know, uh, a, a, a file storage, memory, anything you want. And then the protocol is basically how to communicate, right, to each other. How to communicate between uh, LLM and and resources, resources or servers. Okay, that's really all that it is. There is a consumer at the edge of this architecture, right? There is a uh, the context and the intelligence and basically there's the protocol that basically enables you to communicate back and forth right so there's a server and there's a client right there's a server and there's a client right the server itself inside of that server so here's a server the server itself has three things right it has the protocol it has resources Okay, that's resources, and it has tools, and I'll tell you what these things are. Tools. Okay, what are these things? Well, a protocol will describe how your server is going to be communicated with. Is this a gRPC? Is this a RESTful operation? It's an exposure layer of some kind, right? Resources are more like data, right? So this is data that sits in your server and you're serving it through your server. Think it as a file or a, a raw content or JSON, whatever it may be, that's what resources are. And then you have the tools, which is a little bit smarter resources, which basically a function. It could be an add function, right? It could be something that you work with to kind of communicate, like you're, you're telling it, calculate the value of pi. I know that you know, right now LLMs are so smart, they'll do it for you out of the box, but that's the simplest possible example that I can think of for you. On the client side, so that's the server side. Okay, so this is sitting here, that's the server side. That's an MCP server. Okay, great. On the other side of this aisle, there are three other things on the client side. The first part is the prompt, right? A prompt initializes the call and it goes through. The prompt goes into a model and the model looks up MCP tools. And these MCP tools basically goes and talks to this protocol like this, and it basically says, hey, what kind of tools you have? My 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 consumer, so this MCP client right here, my, to, my, my consumer is telling me what the weather is today. Do you have tools or resources that I can use to kind of be able to serve my customer, 
right? So you're talking to a server, the MCP client talking to the MCP server, a prompt triggers a model, a model calls MCP tools, it goes through the protocol, it either picks up tools or the tools calls resources or calls resources directly. Try nature of everything. This here, like I want you to burn that image in your memory because that's the simplest way I can describe MCP servers today. And I'm gonna show you now in a second what that looks like in action as we usually do. Okay, so you have that view. Just think about it for a second. Models and context and protocol, MCP. Let's go ahead and create a quick project. I'm going to create the simplest possible C-sharp code you can imagine that will kind of get you to where you want to be. So I'm going to, let's just start with an empty solution first because I want to do this right. So here's a blank solution and then simple MCP. So I'm just calling it simple MCP just like that. I popped up the biggest 57 inch Visual Studio instance. Let's start a new project again console and then in here I'm going to say simple mcp.server so we're starting from the server and working backwards to the client here we go i'm going to install a simple library a very a very beautiful library it's not one of those common ones that people are using because even the common like the common ones is basically called model context protocol and it's still in pre-release like if you uncheck the pre-release and it has some issues in it let me show you what actually works something called mcp sharp it's it's a it's a smart guy sitting somewhere and he put it online and I think the standard community should actually develop their own but this one here is very very important and very interesting take a look and see so we installed this okay I'm gonna go here and say using mcp sharp dot sir uh, mcp sharp is fine like this and then I'm gonna go here and watch this I'm gonna create first something called public class calculator tool so i'm creating a tool remember remember the remember the, the the architecture we're creating a tool right here right and that tool will be exposed through a protocol right so what does this calculator tool do i'm going to go here and say mcp tool like this and this mcp tool has a name let's call it addition and let's give it a description description like this and says uh uh, tool this tool will add two numbers so that's all it's doing it's adding two numbers sweet and simple very easy no problem and then I'm gonna create the actual function so public static integer uh, addition now here comes the parameter part look you're documenting while you're coding and I'll tell you why that's important for for your uh, LLM model so MCP parameter and this parameter needs a name Let's give that parameter a name. So MCP, uh, uh, first of all, let's define if it's required. That's true, it's required. We need two numbers. And then you have the description, right? And that is first number, first number. I think that's all. You can, you can define a, um, I don't know, you can define other things, but that's basically the two things. I see, I see both uh, lowercase and uppercase and that's just the library but that's fine so this first number and then I'm gonna do the exact same same thing control D here I'm just gonna call it the second number so second number and this is my second number so I'm literally just creating a very simple function that adds two numbers return first number plus second number we're done Okay, now I want to register this tool in the server. Watch this, MCP server dot register. You can say register tool if you like, and then you can say calculator tool, done. Is that it? Not really. We need to start the server, right? So we're going to go here and say MCP server dot start async. And you want to give your server a name, sure, server name, um, simple MCP server. And you want to give it a version, sure, Let's say v1.0.0, like that. Cool. So I created a server, and the server has a... You're not going to find anything simpler than that. This is really bare bone, down to the minute of detail, right? Okay. Is this server working? I think it's working. You know, if we go and start this server, it's just going to keep running. But we need to build a client to talk to it, right? So we already defined what this is. All good in here. Okay. Now... The second part, I want to build the client. The client for this server is super important because that's how you're going to actually visualize how, like, 
Like you want to make sure that your client also understands the language of the server. And if they don't understand the language of the server, it's not going to work out. I want to just make sure that, you know, before I forget, because it's asynchronous and I want it to, like it shouldn't shut down. So I'm going to go and say async task in here because it, as soon as I start it like this, it shouldn't shut down. Yeah, it keeps running. Like it's iterating because it's waiting for requests to come in and out. Okay, so that's a server. Let's go build the client part of this. So let's go here, add a new project. Also a console application. MC, uh, simple mcp.client. So let's start this guy. Again, the same library. So let's go here, pick up the library, uh, MCP mcp.sharp. There you go. Install this library here. There you go. And let's let's go and start this. So I need a client, right? So let's go here and say client new MCP client. And this client wants stuff from me. It wants a name. So this is MCP client. It doesn't matter. It wants a version. Okay, sure. Here's a version v1.0.0. And then it wants a server. Ah, that's what it gets interesting. The server, is it remote? Is it local? Is it RESTful? Is it going to be gRPC? Is it going to be this? Is it going to be that? No, no, no. I'm running, I'm running everything local. I can actually just have this client point directly to the server and do a standard input output. Direct standard input output. And it will find exactly where it is. And it's going to bring it down to me. So let me just show you. I'm going to go here and basically just open the file explorer. So let me just open the file explorer for this for a second. Here we go. Oops, sorry. Here's the file explorer. And then inside that file explorer, I'm going to go into bin, debug, net9. Uh, did it not build the... Oh, I'm in the client. I need the server, right? So bin, debug, whatever. And then you can see down here that MCP server guy that we're looking for. So I'm just going to do a quick show more options, properties, and then copy the entire kind of uh, location. Drop it down here. Of course, you can do you can do nicer like oh make it uh, accessible and it needs whatever. It's up to you. You do that. Simple MCP .server .exe. Okay, so I basically just put a location. It's a standard input output. Whatever the server gives me back, I can communicate with it. Couldn't get any simpler than that. To confirm that things are working, I'm gonna have this guy list list all the tools that are available in that server, right? So list tool. Oops. Uh, list tool that's an mcp model tool and then i'm going to go ahead and say await client dot get tools async okay let's put that guy at a task like this and then we want to print these tools so i'm going to go ahead and say uh console uh let, let's do this so uh console right line tools tools dot count ah it's fighting me tools dot count so that's one. It'll tell me how many tools it has. But more importantly, I want to get one of these tools. I know there's only one. So tools.first first dot name. Maybe we'll do the description too, so you see the whole thing, right? Okay. Let's run the server first. So I'm gonna play, just click play, run the server here. And then I'm gonna spin up the client in the same instance. So I'm just gonna do read like this so it doesn't kinda close on us and I'm just gonna go here and run this guy or even I can I can do it even better I can go into the um, the developer develop uh, the developer tools right here and I can just run it straight from here so let's do this so uh, simple MCP client dot net run something like that look at this how do I zoom this in it says addition this will add two numbers. So it basically talked to the server. I want I want my uh, PowerShell. Yeah, there you go, this guy. Oh, it's sad that I can't kind of uh, zoom in, zoom it in for you a little bit. But that's basically what I'm doing. I'm basically going and saying, no, now now I'm gonna I'm kind of uh, interested. I, I yeah, this one here. Yeah, this one is better. This will allow me to zoom in, and you'll be able to see it. Yeah, I really care that you that you can see it. So see the simple client. And then .NET run. Watch this. Look, you have one tool. It's called addition. This tool will add two numbers. How cool is that? That's because the server is running, right? Okay, how do I call this server? Let's go back here into the code. 
and go and say var result equal await client dot call tool async. Okay, remember the tool name is what? The tool name was addition. You can get that name by listing all the tools. That's why I did that list first so you get to see that. But also because and this is optional, depends on the tool that you're using, you need to still kind of provide parameters, right? So we need a dictionary in here, and this dictionary will have key value pairs like that. Remember, we needed to pass a first name, last name. So first uh, first number, last number. So first number, let's say first number is, is four or five. Second number, second number here is going to be 10. So you want 15. Okay, so this will actually call the tool that's sitting on the server from the client and it will go give you the results. It should give us back 15, right? Is this true? I don't know. Let's find out. So console right line result dot content zero dot text, something like that. There you go. Is this actually true? Let's find out. So if I go into package manager again and run the exact same thing. There we go. It's stuck. It's saying uh, I'm retrying because your uh, your client is being consumed by another person or program. Let's shut this down and let me try to start the server again. Yeah, man. Okay, so the server is running, and then I'm gonna go back here, clear out this, and basically go in the .NET zone. So sorry, the the client zone. There you go. .NET. Now it's still being consumed by another by another thing. It's still running somewhere. We need to shut it down. Is it this guy? Let's shut this guy down. Let's try that again. Or is it this guy? It could spot it possibly be this guy as well. So let me kill that guy here. There you go. Try that again. This should technically fail now. Oh, look at that. 15. Look at that. Do you see? Do you see that? So you basically went and called the server and gave me 15. And I'll prove it to you. If I go here in the program and basically say plus 100, so whatever I call it to, it will kind of come down to that. Hopefully that's not. Yeah, that's that's running somewhere else in the system. So <laughs> that's why you should have two different projects. But you get the idea, right? Like we basically created this addition, right? And we exposed this. And then in the client area, we basically called this function. And now your LLM can learn because it knows about all the details about the capabilities and the tools that are available. And you are able to kind of consume it and be able to kind of expose it to your LLM. This kind of signifies a part of this architecture just for this one particular video. What we did today, basically, let me take away these areas where we haven't done. Uh, so we did MCP tools to protocol. We haven't done the model and the prompt yet. That's from previous sessions where we worked on. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you consume resources as well, but how you can have your model learn about your MCP tools and act as an agentic model that actually makes calls to different MC MCP servers. And these different MCP servers will serve different purposes. There's a lot of challenges here. Like remember, this is a bleeding edge. So it's not exactly 100% reliable. It's hoping and wishing that your LLM, maybe Mistral, not something like Tiny Llama, something more conserved and, and, and smarter, right? To basically learn about the tools and only call the tools with the exact same schema. That's a challenge the entire industry is trying to solve these days. And hopefully we can find solutions. I have enough smart people to solve any problems. So I'm sure we're going to find a solution for it. Uh, I can't wait to show you part two where we kind of put the whole thing together, all the things that we learned before. You remember how we talked about having a, a large language model call, uh, call, call a GGuf file uh, from C sharp.net. So C sharp application calling a large language model from C sharp.net. We talked about Agentic. We talked about RAG. We talked about you know how we kind of you process the files and fine tune a model. This right here is the next big step in the architecture. I can't wait to show you that next week. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon. Take care.